Hey bakers, John Canal from Prep Your Kitchen here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make the perfect pie crust every time. Throwing in all my tips and tricks, food processor by hand, you will be able to make a great pie crust no matter what. Let's get started. I'm using a food processor for this, but you can do it by hand so easily. I'll explain how in just a few minutes, it's almost as fast and you get a really good result too. 300 grams or two and a half cups of all-purpose flour right into the bowl of your food processor. One quarter cup of sugar. You could use like a couple tablespoons if you want it less sweet. If you're making a savory like quiche dough, just skip the sugar. Half a teaspoon of salt. That's it. Okay, we're gonna give this a whiz now. Now I'll whiz it up, just pulse so it mixes everything together. I will sometimes give it a shake, just to make sure. Now it's time for the butter. Some people will use shortening in their pie crusts and the advantage to that is that you get a really, really flaky pie crust, but I will not use shortening. It is a hydrogenated fat and I'm not living for that life. I will use plain old butter and get a butter crust. I'm adding one cup or 226 grams of cold cubed butter. Just toss it all right in there. It's a good idea to cube your butter first and then just keep it in the fridge for when you're ready. That way it'll be nice and cold. So if you were making this by hand without a food processor, which is what I used to do for years, just get your dry ingredients in a large bowl, whisk them together. Then take your butter, freeze it. Use a cheese grater and just grate your butter into the flour, mixing as you go so there's not a giant clump. And then when you're ready, drizzle in your ice water, maybe vodka if you're using it too, and then just crumble it up. You can use a knife, you don't wanna make the butter too warm. Same steps afterwards for working the dough. Okay, let's pulse this up a couple times. Take a look. Not putting my fingers in this, <laughs> death contraption. And you can see here I have a crumbly mixture, like, you know, lentil-sized pieces of butter, not pea-sized. If you want a really flaky pie crust, you would like to have giant chunks of butter in there. But if you're gonna make any kind of a pattern, a lattice, little stamped out shapes, you wanna have a more uniform pie crust. Okay, now I'm gonna have a quarter cup mixed in mostly with ice water, maybe like three tablespoons of ice water, but I'm taking some vodka. So the vodka will make your dough come together, but it's not gonna like hydrate the flour, so it'll just bake off when you're baking it. You're not gonna taste any vodka, nothing to worry about, and you're not gonna activate the gluten as much. All right, so I'm gonna drizzle this in while I pulse. Okay, take a look. Look at this. Now it's dough, isn't that crazy? Don't keep adding water or vodka to it. It's done. Okay, we're gonna roll this out now. Remove that blade and set it aside carefully. Hmm, it's so sharp. All right, we're gonna dump this out right onto our pastry mat. If you don't have a pastry mat, you can work on a sheet of parchment paper or even directly on your counter, but it helps to have something between your counter and what you're dumping out because if it sticks, it's just annoying. Okay, like I said, this looks like a crazy big mass of flour, but you squeeze it with your hands, it becomes pastry dough, it's so cool. All right, I like to just use the pastry mat to bring it together a few times, and you're not gonna knead it, but what you are gonna do is knead it, <laughs> just like once or twice. And don't worry if it seems crumbly now, because when you let it rest in the fridge, it'll all even out all those little specks of moisture will seep together. There you go, you see? It's, it just needs to be pressed. All right, and then just flatten it out into a disc. Just collect all those scraps that fell to the side. We're gonna wrap this in plastic. <laughs> just struggling with this plastic over here. All right, wrap it well in plastic. You don't want it to be exposed and dry out in the fridge. And now we're going to chill it. You can chill it overnight if you want. It's nice to like step things out, especially when you're busy, but at least give it, I would say, an hour in the fridge. After your dough's chilled out in the fridge for an hour to overnight, we're gonna take it out and then let it come a little bit back to room temperature. If it's super cold, it'll crack right away. So it needs to be chilled through, but then brought back a little bit. Okay, so unwrap it, 
you can still see all those beautiful specks of butter in the flour. Liberally sprinkle some flour on the surface. You're gonna do this a couple times because you do not want your pie crust to stick. I'm also using a pastry mat, again, because it lets me lift things off, manipulate it, and I don't have to worry about anything. Sprinkle the top with flour, get a rolling pin, and rub that with flour too. Everything will help. Now begin pressing, and as you do this, you can frequently move the dough around. You probably will get a crack, don't worry about it. Just pinch it together, and everything will work out. Try to apply even pressure. It'll make things much better for you in the end. And you don't have to roll all the way out to the edge because that makes the edge a little bit thinner than everything else, which is not what you want. A little more flour. I'm gonna flip it upside down. Look at all those beautiful cracks. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And keep rolling. And add some more flour to the top. Just spread it around. Excess goes on your rolling pin. Don't rush this part, take your time. It's a little bit of kind of a zen meditation for you. And I find that when you make pie crusts, if you start getting anxious about it and like rushing steps or kind of losing track of what you're doing, bad things can happen. So I wanna end up with about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Notice I'm changing the direction that I'm rolling in as well. A little bit more flour. And this is the nice thing about the pastry mat. You can just pick the whole thing up and it really helps you. All right, that's great. Now to lift this up, you can either fold it into quarters or I like to roll it on my pin. Let that pastry mat give you a head start. And now here's your dough ready to roll into whatever you want. I'm using, of course, a pie crust. Roll that back in, try and center it. For this step, I'm gonna press in because I don't wanna stretch the dough out. If you start stretching your dough out when you manipulate it, it can shrink back more easily and you're not gonna have the pie shape that you want. It'll be like a bit shrunken. You can do whatever edging detail you like. I'm gonna do a really, really basic one. Just gonna trim the excess pie dough off with some scissors. So this is actually fine. If you want, you can fold the pie crust in on itself and then do that pinching with your thumb and two fingers. That's the classic edge. However, this glass pie form is so slippery and has really steep walls, actually. So I learned the hard way that if you do that and like bring the pastry all the way in, there's a higher probability it'll slide down during bacon, bacon, baking, even if you do all the right steps. So what I'm gonna do is kind of a cheat I'm gonna hold my thumb out and then press in like this. So I'm gonna get a nice kind of rustic edge, but the pie will still be clinging to the glass edge and won't slide down as easily. Just repeat that all the way throughout your pie. This is great because you can bake the pie shell up, it'll look kind of pretty and hold everything in there. But if you're making like a lattice top for an apple pie or a blueberry pie, then you're gonna want a different edge most likely. This looks pretty good to me. It's gonna go into the freezer, but first we're gonna do a little bit more prep work so that we can toss it directly into the oven right as soon as it's chilled properly. Trusty sheet of parchment paper. I'm gonna fold this up. Does not have to be exact, so don't worry. Okay, so from the edge here, now I have my circle. I'm just gonna frill the edges a bit. Now we can place this directly into our pie shell. Look how pretty that is. Perfect. If you're making a no-bake pie, like any kind of a mousse, a curd, whatever, you're gonna wanna blind bake the pie shell and then bake the pie shell completely. When you do that, you need to give it some support. So I have my paper here to protect it, but we're gonna add in this whole little heavy-duty aluminum foil contraption that I made, and it just pops right in. I filled it with beans. You can use pastry weights as well. I actually have some, I have no idea where I put them, sad. But beans work too. And anyways, what's gonna happen is, after this chills in the freezer, you're gonna bake it, but just press that foil up against the edge. If you're using a fresh sheet, just, you know, crumple it in carefully, and then have it go right to the edge. We're ready to freeze this. So you can freeze it overnight if you want, or for as little as like 30 minutes. So my pie crust has been baking for 15 minutes at 425, and you can see the crust is nice and, you know, it's coming along. It's not melty. Perfect. 
Now we're just going to remove our very hot, very hot foil. Yeah. And take our paper out too. I whipped up a really quick egg wash with a tablespoon of cream and one egg, just mixed in a small container. You can use milk if you want instead. And we're just gonna brush the entire surface with the egg wash. Doing this will make it nice and golden brown and give you a pretty sheen as well, but it also protects the crust and helps it maintain its crispness even if you're adding in a wet filling. It's like a little barrier to protect it. So I like to get the edge really well because that's what you're gonna see. And it needs to be pretty, right? So dock the bottom, just pierce it with a fork. This will help steam escape. You get little rips in the bottom, no one's gonna see them, it doesn't matter. Now, we're gonna baby our pie crust by tenting it. You can buy like little pre-made metal rings to protect your pie shell, but for me, they always are the wrong size and it doesn't work out. Foil just works better. So, measure out some foil, fold it in half, and gently create a ring. We're gonna fold in, and this will protect the edge so it doesn't burn while the rest of the pie crust gets that nice golden color and really crisps up. If you don't tent your pie crusts, you'll get like a black and really, really dark, almost bitter tasting edge while the rest of it is nice and perfect. So tenting makes a big deal. Place this onto a baking sheet. Hopefully it's not too slippery. And we're gonna bake this again for mm, 10 to 15 minutes at 425 then reduce the temperature to 375 and continue baking. You can rotate your pie crust as well if you want. And then we're going to be checking it at 10 minute intervals to see how golden it is. Well, that was so easy. Look how nice, look at this beautiful color. You can use it for any no-bake pie filling. It is gonna be just so crunchy and delicious. But before I say goodbye, I wanna show you what happens when you don't support your pie crust properly. Ugh, this is one of the test batches from yesterday and it looks okay from this one little angle, but look at this sag. It's because it wasn't well supported. I actually took the tin foil out too early. If you like this recipe, use it to make my chocolate pie. It's an airy, rich, just silky chocolate pie that'll blow your mind. And you could also use the same recipe to make my apple hand pies. They're little mini apple pie cookies that are just full of caramel, apples, crunchy pastry, and they will blow your mind. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.